Hey, what's going on, Internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So I was listening to one of my favorite scores, and that score is Somnus from Final Fantasy XV. Yes, I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan, so yeah, there's that. Let me know in the comments if you're into that game. You know, that's cool. But I was listening to this uh, you know, soundtrack, and there's this beautiful audio reaction of this you know, headphone here. And I thought, you know what? I want to create a tutorial on how to create an audio reaction for any uh, object. And that's what we'll be doing here. And we also have this custom timeline here with an automated uh, time counter, which is awesome. And we'll also be looking at some other audio reaction elements and really creating this awesome scene for audio reaction. So let's go ahead and jump into this tutorial and let's get started. First things first, I want to bring in our soundtrack. And if you hit LL on your keyboard, you can see the audio waveforms here. I get a lot of comments where I get my music from, and it's from artless.io. I also pick up music from Premium B as well. So I'll always keep those links in the description from now on for where I get my music from for my videos. So here we are. The first thing we want to do is we want to create the actual object that we want to audio react. So what you can do is you can find a vector object of what you're looking to audio react, or you can create this like an illustrator. And I have plenty of tutorials on how to design vectors in illustrator. But for this, I Googled uh, headphones, you know, PNG image. And I found this headphone image and just from scratch, I can bring this right into here. And now we have this, you know, picture of headphones. And what we need to do is we need to go up to layer auto trace and I'm going to use a tolerance of one and click OK. And basically, we just need like a nice mask. So you don't even have to auto trace anything. You can just go grab the pen tool and you can create your own custom path. Like I said, I've created tutorials on how to do vectors inside of After Effects from Illustrator. And I'll link those videos in the description of the video. So from here, we can turn on the mask icon, which is right here, mask visibility. And you see we have this blue mask here and we hit M on our keyboard. There's the mask. So now we can delete the headphones layer, which we auto traced or any other layer that you have. So right off the start, we can go up to Effect, Generate, and we can grab the Audio Spectrum effect. And from here, we want to set the audio layer to our soundtrack. And then we want to go to Path, and we want to select the Mask, Mask 1. And then, obviously, we can start to see a little bit of an outline here. It's not great, so we need to work on that. So let's increase the frequency bands up to, like, until a lot, right? So maybe, like, 1,500. And then we can go to the Thickness, and we can increase this as well. So we can start to see a little bit of, you know, the outline of our mask here. And we can always go to the maximum height and we get some crazy stuff going on here. So just to kind of get things in perspective, I know it's a little bit grainy, but we're starting to get that audio reaction. So let's go ahead and just play. All right. So to get a quick idea, boom. Okay. So we have the audio reaction in place and now we just kind of have to work on everything. So uh, there's a lot we can do. It's really awesome what we can do. So let's go to the, um, the side options where it says side A and B, and let's just set this to side B. All right, so we can so the middle, the interior of our headphones or whatever object you're doing isn't going to be audio reacted. So I think that's really cool and a little bit more uh, clean, if you will. And also some cool things here. You go to you can also go to hue interpolation, and you can change this up if you want to keep this multicolor. And this actually audio reacts as well. So. That's really cool, but for this tutorial, I don't really want to do that. I really just like the clean white style that I saw. So we can come here to the inside and outside color and change this both to white. And now we kind of have this very nice, easy white color here, very clean. And then also for display options, you can come over here and you can change this to like the style of it to analog lines, analog dots. It's really cool, but I'm gonna keep it at digital for here. The more that I increase the frequency band, so maybe go to like 4,000 on the frequency bands, the more solid the color is going to look, right? So we don't have any of those lines in there. And that's really up to you what you want to do with that. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of customization into this, but for the most part, we have this audio reaction now of the headphones. Now, let's go ahead and expand on this even more, right? So let's come over here and let's create that automated timeline that you saw. And I would think that's really cool. So let's grab the rectangle tool. Make sure no layer is selected. And just create this, you know, very thin rectangle like so, maybe a little thicker. And click the word fill and set that to none. Click OK. Click the word stroke and set this to a solid color. All right. So if you need to make any changes to this, you can open it up and do that as you see fit. All right. And let's go to the align tab and let's center this up. There you have it. And then let's grab the rectangle tool again. And this time, We can come over here and just draw out a very thin rectangle like this. And this time we'll turn off the stroke. We'll turn on the fill. 
Now what we want to do is we want to manipulate the vertices in here. So let's go to the rectangle two, go to rectangle path one. Let's right click rectangle path one and convert to Bezier path and go to path one. And now what you can do is hold down shift on your keyboard and you can select multiple points here and you can make it some adjustments as you see fit. Cool. So what I want to do is go to the beginning of our timeline here and add a keyframe for path, right? And then I want to go to the end of our key, uh, our timeline here and I'm going to select the uh, first two vertices here and just drag this out all the way to the end of the, uh, you know, rectangle here. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to the first keyframe and I'm going to drag these two first, these two vertices inward so we don't really see the shape at all. And as the song plays, this bar will animate as time progresses on. So that's awesome. So now let's go ahead and create like an indicator to show where the playhead's at. So let's grab the polygon tool and draw out a perfect, you know, polygon like this. Go to the polystar one settings, go to polystar path one, set the number of points down to three. So you have this triangle here and we can make any scaling adjustments here. And we can always, you know, scale this down by a little bit and then reposition this to be about right here. Awesome. And then before we do any more animation, let's go ahead and type out our text here. So I'll just type out our, just anything, it doesn't really matter. And we come here, change the typeface if you want. And just keep it there. So that's looking good. And now what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna, we're gonna need to input an expression, right? So I have this expression um, that I will provide in the description of the video so you can just copy paste it. So let's go open up our text layer. Let's go to the text. Alt click the stopwatch next to source text and just paste in what I will provide in the description. And as you see, we have this expression here that will play from the beginning of time to the end of your timeline, depending on how long you want this layer to play for. So now as we progress here, you can see at you know two seconds, the clock says two seconds. At four seconds, the clock says four seconds. So as you can see, you know, as you progress into the minutes, you can go ahead and you can work with that. So now we'll take our triangle and our timeline here, hit P on your keyboard for position, add a keyframe for both of those, go to the end of our uh, timeline, and let's have this completely squared up towards the end there. And as you can see now, that this will follow the, play, the timeline here exactly at the beginning. So that is awesome. All right, so, so let's say we wanna create some other audio reaction elements. What we can do is go up to layer, new, solid, and we can call this one waveform audio and click on make comp size, click okay. And let's grab the pen tool and let's just draw out a straight line like so. And then let's go back to our headphone layer. Let's copy the audio spectrum and let's paste it into the audio waveform. So now we have like a separate you know, element here. I can see obviously it just takes the path of whatever you're looking to do, but we wanna create something a little bit more custom. So what we can do here is maybe we can set this to analog lines bring down the thickness to maybe two, and maybe go to the maximum height and lower that. And then maybe we can set the side from side B to side A. And now we have a separate audio reaction here. And you know, now we have a separate, you know, line audio reaction. And let's say we want to create like, you know, some dots here, like we saw in the video. What we can do is, you know, maybe duplicate this layer, you know, delete the mask and come over here and, you know, create a nice, you know, kind of arc shape like this with the pen tool. And now we can go back into the path here, go to mask one, and now we have this. Now what we can do is go to the uh, display options and set this to analog dots. And what we wanna do here is bring down the frequency bands to maybe about six. Maybe we'll do like, we'll do like 10. And now we have these dots in here. And of course we can increase the thickness to maybe about seven. And now we have these dots, which will, be in, uh, which will be audio reacting to the song. And we can come here, duplicate this layer, go up to layer, transform, and we click on flip horizontal. And it's right there in place. So now we have two duplicated layers here. And you, basically you can see how easy it is to just you know come up with your own custom paths and make this look really nice. And if you really wanted, you could really call this a day, but I want to go ahead and create some more elements in here, like make the background a little bit better. So what we can do here is duplicate our headphone layer, bring this underneath, go up to effect, blur, and sharpen, and grab the Gaussian blur effect. And we'll bring this up to like 40, and you click on repeat edge pixels. And we come over here, we can scale this up. Uh, let's bring down the opacity by hitting T on our keyboard, and bring this down to like 
20%, and we can just offset the position by a touch. Maybe we'll even blur it out even more. So let's go ahead and create some particles, create a new solid, and we'll call this one particles. Click OK. And let's go to Effect, Simulation, CC Particle World. And, you know, I have all these settings kind of memorized here, but what we can do is go right into the particle settings, and let's go to particle type, and let's set this to a cube. All right, so we have these particles in here. We go to birth and depth color, and we can change this color to like a dark blue, and then we'll do even like a darker blue. So we'll create some dynamic shading in here. And let's set the birth rate down to 0.1. And let's go to longevity. And let's increase this for a very long time, so maybe like 20 seconds or so. And go to the max opacity, set this to 100%. Go to the size variation, bring that to 100% as well. Go to the birth and death size. We'll go to like 0.2 for both birth and death. Let's go right into the physics and let's decrease the velocity to zero. And we can bring down the gravity to like 0.1. And from here, we can go into the producer and we can increase the radius X by a little bit. Maybe also the radius Y by a touch. And now we can go to the position X. We can move this over, bring it up. And now you'll have like these extra particles floating around here. And then we go back into the headphone two layer, copy the Gaussian blur and paste it into the particle layer. And maybe we'll put the blurriness down to like 20. All right, and make sure to turn on motion blur for all your layers, turn it on at the top. And after a quick render, this is what we have. Okay, so obviously I would probably work on the height of this, make sure it doesn't overlap into your timeline. But for the most part, this looks really good and I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and hopefully you're gonna create some awesome work now. So. If you guys enjoyed the video, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this, and please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video, and as always, I hope you have a good day.